consumer of the press, particularly those uh, covering the, the Senate. It's my pleasure to be here in your midst um, this afternoon. Um, just two hours ago, I was sworn in to represent Alambra from Person to the district in this current uh, Senate. And um, I can say that I'm very pleased to be here. It's been a long walk to get to this hallowed chambers of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to represent my people. Um, my excitement stems from the fact that as tedious as the journey was, uh, finally I was able to come here um, through a process that is in accord with the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Um, I've often said this when I was national chairman of APGA, that the only way our democracy can survive is by everybody following the rules, obeying the laws of the country, and relying on the votes of the electorates to win elections to get to leadership at any level, be it executive or legislative. And uh, the advocates of Anambra Central and the District appear to be the longest drawn battle uh, to this eighth National Assembly. Um, I'm very happy that um, the institutions that have roles to play in this matter uh, were patient enough for us to um, get to this uh, stage where uh, the person who not only won the election in 2015, but was rigged out, uh, was given the opportunity to go through the judicial process um, to get this victory, which brought me here now on the 13th of uh, January 2018. No doubt, um, so much has been lost, particularly by my people of Anambra Central Electoral District. But there is no loss that will be greater than the loss of due process, obedience to the laws, obedience to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. When I was being sworn in this morning, my, my oath of office and my oath of allegiance underscored the fact that I must be obedient to the laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I couldn't imagine that somebody would want to be a senator, a House of Rep member, a governor, even president, or anything um, without following the provisions of this constitution. So those who have abused our laws sometimes find themselves in the Hello Chambers or in the executive authority taking oath of allegiance to the constitution. There's no way you can um, bypass the provisions of the law and arrive at any position and begin to swear to an oath of allegiance. It's a very important oath. When people do take this oath, they don't imagine the implications of saying, I do this, so help me God. When you attach God to any oath you take, you must be very careful of what you do. So um, I am very happy that uh, eventually I've been vindicated. So much was done, so much was put on my way to come into this Senate. But I persevered uh, uh, following what the law says. I went through various courts, you know. Some of the courts rendered the uh, wrong decisions against me. I went to the appellate court to get justice. And uh, it is important for us to know that in this country called Nigeria, there is no shortcut to what is right. Everybody must follow what is right. That's the only way we can survive. People who circumvent the processes, the laws, will land up, keep landing us in trouble. Because if you are sent to office, to authority, to a, through a fraudulent process, you cannot produce, you cannot promise Nigerians that you'll be a good leader. So uh, mine is a lesson to everybody who wants to engage in judicial process, I mean, in, in, engage in political process. Uh, as national chairman, you know, I fought very gallantly to deepen democracy in this country, using Abga, the party that I led, from 2003, when the first governor, Abga, got won his election, he was denied. We had to go through the tribunals and the court of appeal before that governor emerged. Again, um, 
uh, through the same uh, uh, event, I was able to spearhead, for the first time in Nigeria, a tenure interpretation suit. Because when Governor B came into office, he was described as a youth call uh, governor. Because his tenure had been eaten deep into almost uh, three years. And they started describing him as a youth call governor. Uh, I looked at it as a national chairman of the party then. I, I was worried that somebody who won an election to be governor for four years would be described as a youth call governor. You know, youth service is one year. So I had to pick the constitution. I read the tenure of office of uh, governor. Section 182 says that the tenure of office of the governor shall start to run from the day he takes oath of office for four years certain. And I knew that it was something that should be explored through litigation. I granted an interview in 2006, saying that it will be tenure will end in 2010. They laughed me away and uh, went to court. Through painstaking judicial process, we lost at the High Court, we lost at the Court of Appeal, and landed at the Supreme Court. And on the 14th of June, 2007, the Supreme Court indeed agreed with the provision of Section 182 of the Constitution, that a governor shall be in office for four years from the day he takes out of office. It was a landmark judgment in this country, and uh, that brought our activities uh, to the front burner. Over the years, the same thing. I've gone through all kinds of uh, legal processes to ensure the right things are done, that people do not abuse the laws of Nigeria, you know. So I had great faith in the letters of the Constitution and the various laws in place, like the Electoral Act and so on and so forth. So when I contested for Senate uh, in 2015, uh, something that had been happening in Nigeria, particularly in Anambra State, and nobody was uh, determined to fight it, was um, the issue of multiple candidates in elections. Um, uh, PDP in Anambra State was notorious for this practice. Every election time, they will have about five people through different uh, arrangements to be contesting one election against one candidate each from all the other political parties. And when uh, I became a candidate, I had the local standing to attempt to put a stop to that menace because it was anti-democratic. One candidate from every other political party will be running an election. PDP will be running with five candidates in the same election. At the end, you announce the result. Not only that they may lose the votes of the people, they will also hijack the election and they get on with it. I said I will fight it. That's what you, you saw that brought me to this place. I had to engage PDP in a very strenuous uh, fight. And along the line, they, you know, they denied they never they put the law. But you journalists, you saw that uh, between 2015 and now, you have seen actually about five candidates of PDP for the same Anambra State Press in the three district the election. Each person claiming to have been the rightful candidate. The first was the first person sworn in here that the, the election was nullified for, uh, later somebody from PDP to join the fray, to join the rerun, went to go through the courts to state the law that in a rerun election, only the candidates that took part in the nullified election will go for the rerun. No room for fresh candidates. You know, the High Court gave a wrong treatment, saying that PDP is enti was entitled to change its candidate. We had to go and appeal. Thank God, INEC leadership, this current leadership, is determined to follow what the law says. INEC also went on appeal against that judgment. And on 20th November 2017, the Court of Appeal set aside that judgment and restored this process to the part of the law, you know, which paved way for the election taking place. It didn't end there. Along the line, somebody got another judgment from the High Court, it should be sworn in. Somebody who wasn't part of the process at all, one Dr. Bill Okonko, you were aware of that. He came here to be sworn in again because the leadership of the Senate is uh, focused. They refused that uh, 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 invitation, and uh, we couldn't be sworn in, you know. And through um, 
the effort to get the law take its place, the judge that other than she sworn in had to overrule himself, you know, on the 12th of January, you know. So these are the things. While we were there, one other person came up to the Court of Appeal claiming that he was the candidate uh, and the opponent. The election should not take place. The Court of Appeal refused. So you could see that it wasn't an easy journey for me to get there. But having arrived here, I promise all of you one thing. My presence at this Senate is to help deepen democracy in this country, deepen the rule of law in our country. A country that has no respect for its laws and constitution will become simply a banana republic. And we cannot afford that. It's only when we begin to do things the way the law provides that we can hope to run a responsible government that will benefit the citizens of this country. If we believe that anything goes, it means that anything can go. And anything, if anything goes, the evil will thrive here. So I've come here uh, with happiness to support the current leadership of the Senate uh, that have been very forthright on this, my issue, you know. And then two, to contribute very robustly during debates at plenary towards searching for a truly united country. A lot of challenges face our country today. People play ostrich to the truth. They don't want to address the issues the way they ought to be addressed. All of us are Nigerians and we need ourselves. We need each other. And the only way Nigeria can survive and prosper is when me and all of us Nigerians become equal citizens of this country. If we do not discriminate against each other, and we do things in a manner that will be even-handed, every Nigerian will have faith in a country called Nigeria. And the country will make a giant progress. So coming here, I'm going to help in finding solutions to these various national issues. The country is heavily divided along different lines. It is through the activities of this Senate and in this National Assembly that solutions will be found to those things that divide Nigeria. Apart from the attitude of those who are in the executive authority, you can use lawmaking to get everybody to sit up. And that will be my uh, focal uh, approach to issues there. So I uh, thank you very much. From time, we'll be relating uh, in this hello chamber. And uh, I, I know that Nigeria will be stronger if we rework those things that cause agitations everywhere. When people are complaining and you don't want to address the reasons for their complaints, the problem will fester. And when the problem festers, what you will be getting will be revolt from various groups. But when we're dispassionate, when issues arise in Nigeria, we close ranks as Nigerians and tackle those issues in a manner that things will be good for everybody, then you see that you will begin to make progress. So that is it. Nigeria will be a great country when all of us love the country. If all of us don't love the country and we have a union that is uh, viewed as uh, not functional in terms of benefit that accrue to all involved in this country, uh, we will just be postponing the doomsday. So I believe that God being our helper um, in this Senate that I have come to, I will uh, do everything to assist with my own views and efforts to ensure that um, Nigeria becomes truly a united country that all of us will be proud to belong to. Thank you. Thank you.